Hello and welcome back to Gapy's Garden. It's time for the September pepper update. So we're here in the greenhouse and as you can see, it's getting a little bit crowded in here. We've got several of our fig containers in the greenhouse to protect them from the rain that we've been getting because if they get too much rain, then the figs will start to split and that's not good. So they're here temporarily and we'll get these moved out before the pepper update so they're not in the way. But I just wanted to show you what the greenhouse is currently looking like right now and we're starting to get our fall weather which is a lot of rain and a lot of cooler temperatures so we've actually gotten down to 34 degrees one morning which is really not very good for the garden but luckily we didn't lose any peppers we didn't have a frost but that's pretty cold so i'm glad we didn't lose any peppers but it's a matter of time before we do so i'm going to start harvesting a lot of peppers in the coming weeks so let's go ahead and get these figs moved out and we'll get started. All right, that looks better. Now we can actually walk through the greenhouse. Let's start over here with the Chinance varieties here on the left starting with this one pepper that was very, very nearly dead this year. I didn't think it was ever gonna get any pods because the leaves just kept dropping and looking very, very sickly. They still don't look that great, but it has improved quite a bit over the last couple of months and we actually do have a couple pods. So here is one, oh, and this is also called the Maruga Red Monster that I got from Twin Cities Peppers last year. So we've got one pod there and one pod right there. So it looks like we may actually see at least two ripe peppers off of this plant, which is pretty amazing considering how poorly it was doing. And I think I might have seen, nope, no other ones back there. But we do have some nice looking volunteer tomatoes. I'm not even sure what variety this is. They just appeared here in the greenhouse and I let it grow. And then back here, we've got one called Peachy, which is a Tony Sherwood cross. And this one was doing pretty poorly as well. It was just not setting any pods, but it finally did start setting some. We've got lots of actually very light colored green pods in here. Nothing is really ripening yet but I don't think they're gonna get too much bigger than that. So they're looking really good. Hopefully they start ripening up here pretty soon. Now back here, we've got an orange Thai hot pepper that I got seeds from white hot peppers. And it is a pretty productive pepper like most Thai peppers are. It was pretty shaded by the bubblegum pepper that's in front of it, but it, I really pretty much hacked that down. I'll show you in a second. Um, but it's got a lot more light now and is able to grow much better. It probably would have done better if I didn't have that bubblegum pepper blocking it. Um, but we do have a few ripe peppers back in there. And it is a pretty hot Thai variety. So here's the bubblegum, what's left of it that I was telling you about. It ended up only getting one single pepper on it. And there it is. It was a humongous pepper plant. I mean, this thing was about four feet tall, three feet wide, and it just was not setting any pods and it had very few flowers. So I decided to just hack it all the way down and I'm gonna be taking it out here pretty soon because I could use this space for planting some of my fall crops that I'll be growing in the greenhouse over winter. But this one was a pretty big disappointment, just not very productive. It's actually starting to grow some new leaves out where I cut down all the branches. Um, but we're just gonna take that out here probably in the next week. Now back here is the Pimenta Puma and it gets these really black pods. They start out just black like this and then eventually they start turning kind of a yellow, yellowish color. So you can see there's some green yellow, orange, lots of different colors on this pod. And this one's got a little bit more orange, but they do eventually ripen to kind of a yellow, 
You can see how yellow these ones here are, but these are pretty tiny pods. But this is another one that got shaded by another pepper. And so it didn't grow super well, but it ended up doing pretty good actually. We got lots of pods back there as well. And then next up we have Fatali. And this one was kind of late setting pods as well, but now it's just, look at all those, it's actually starting to fall over. But we've got tons of pods here on this branch that's hanging down. And I did trim this one back quite a bit as well. Oops, I just accidentally pulled that one off. But that is what the pods look like, a nice kind of a dark orange color, really nice. So we're definitely going to be making a hot sauce out of these once more peppers start ripening up. And here we have the Kangstar Texas Chocolate Bonnet. So these get some nice chocolatey kind of reddish colored pods. So this is the final color of those very dark color. And you can see some red kind of around the stem, some really dark red. So that's how you know it's ripe when it gets that kind of reddish color. But the rest of the pod is pretty chocolatey brown. Really pretty pod. Look at the shape of this pod. Very nice. And this one was actually really quite productive eventually. It started out pretty slow, but I think as the temperatures cooled down a little bit, it really started pushing out lots of pods and they've got a really nice shape on them as well. And then lastly, on the side of the greenhouse, we've got our Kangstar Chocolate Linzo. And we've got some tons and tons of pods. We've got two plants here, so I'm gonna be swimming in chocolate Linzo pods. The first one here is, I believe, the one that I topped. I keep forgetting which one is which. They both are pretty much equally as productive. So I don't think it mattered too much whether I topped it or not. Um, but they both have just tons and tons of pods. This one in the back here looks like it might not have as many ripe, but I think it might have more pods set now. But it was a lot later setting pods than the one in front. Now onto the other side of the greenhouse. This here is the Aleppo that I got from Twin Cities Peppers last year. And I think nearly all of the peppers on this plant are Right, so no, there's one, I think. I think that's the only pepper here that's not ripe yet, and that's a big one. That might be the biggest pepper on the plant, but we definitely need to get ourselves some hot sauce made with these guys now that they're all pretty much ripe. Oh, here's another green one. So we got two green ones still on there, so doing pretty good, pretty productive. Really happy with that one. This one here is the Antep Acidoma. It's a sweet kind of bell-shaped pepper. It's got, it's a bell shape, but it has pretty, pretty big ridges along the pepper. Actually, this one doesn't have too many ridges, but most of them, most of them have quite a few. So this one is the biggest one here. And I have harvested a few of those and they are pretty tasty. And they do seem to be more productive than your regular bell pepper. Here we have the Aconcagua, which is probably my one of my favorite peppers or sweet peppers that I grew this year, just because it is so huge and beautiful. And they're very tasty as well. Super productive for a sweet pepper that gets that big of peppers. Normally a large pepper like this isn't very productive. But we probably have like eight of those large peppers on there. So that is pretty productive in my book for a sweet pepper of that size. And we still have, I have harvested, I think two or three of them. And we still have quite a few here that have yet to ripen. And here we have our Padron pepper. And the first pods on this one were actually pretty mild. But the last several I've harvested have been quite spicy so they were almost too hot to eat but we like to put these pick these when they're green and put them on pizza so I don't know if they tend to get spicier once they get red but it did seem like the the last few we picked were red and very very hot so we need to get those picked and 
I'll probably put the red ones into a hot sauce and then save the green ones for our next pizza. Now here we have another sweet pepper. This one is called Chloe's Sweet Tangerine. And this is from Timothy Moultrip, which he named after his daughter. And this is probably maybe the sweetest sweet pepper that I have in the garden this year. It is really very sweet, which I really like. Um, and it's pretty productive as well. I have a one of these Y stakes here holding it up because it's got quite a few branches that are just really heavy with pods and they just want to flop over. So it did need some support, uh, but it's a really awesome pepper. And I think I will be growing it again next year because I, I just liked it so much and the peppers are just beautiful. And then right next to it, I have, I don't know what pepper this is. This is a volunteer that came up. Normally I don't bother saving volunteer peppers because they don't typically have time to mature, but I decided to just leave that one in here because it wasn't extremely close to the other pepper. So I thought, oh, what the heck, we'll see what happens. Um, but it is getting some flowers. I don't think, it looks like this one may be a pod starting to form. So we'll have to wait and see if it actually produces any pods and see what it actually is. Next up, we have a few Korean gochu varieties. So this one here is called Lady Han, and it is pretty productive. The only thing I don't like about this one is once the peppers ripen, they don't stay, they start getting a little soft. Um, so you do have to be sure to pick them and not leave them on the plant for too long, which is not something I'm very good about. I like to leave the the pods on the plant until I'm ready to harvest them for sauce or powder. So that's the thing I don't like about this one. So you can see how how soft that pod is. Um, so I probably could use that for drying. I'll cut it open and make sure it's not moldy inside and then just save some of these older pods for a pepper powder. So I have another one here called Korean Dark Green. So this is another Korean pepper and this one is kind of similar to the other one. I think this one is, well, it's called Korean dark green. So I think it's probably better to pick these while they're green, but I tend to leave a lot of these on here. So we've got quite a few red pods in there and a lot of them are starting to kind of get soft and dry. So I'm going to be saving a lot of these for pepper powder as well. And then the last gochi variety I have is an unknown variety that I got from Kangstar several years ago. That is my favorite. These ones seem to be able to stay on the plant for longer once they're ripe. So I haven't harvested, I don't think any of these and they all pretty much look nice and crisp and fresh. So that is why I prefer this variety. Um, it also is gets pretty large peppers, but the main reason is because you can leave them on the plant for, you know, several weeks or even months and they won't go bad. Now this one here is called Lemon Dream. It's actually very similar at least in shape and size and kind of growth habit to the Chloe's Tangerine but this one gets a really bright yellow pepper and it's a little bit actually quite a bit smaller than the Chloe's Tangerine and it's definitely not as sweet but it is very very productive and it kind of branches out and requires some support to keep it from touching the ground. But I've harvested quite a few of these pods and I do like it. It's just not as sweet as the tangerine. And here we have the Tinker Bell, which is a mini sweet bell pepper. And it gets pretty small. Actually, these ones are kind of decent size, but they're definitely a smaller shaped bell pepper and they have very, very thick walls and they're not really as sweet as I was hoping. So I probably won't grow this again, but it was a fun variety to try. There are other colors of this. I think there's a red and maybe a yellow. So I wouldn't mind trying the other ones just to see if they are any sweeter, but I wasn't super impressed with the flavor of this particular one. Now this little guy is the Violet Sparkle. And for some reason, this one just did not grow very well this year. Um, the times I've grown it before, it was very productive and got really big, but I just did not have very many pods and it didn't really grow that much. 
So we've got two ripe ones here. They get a really dark red color, really pretty. And it's a very sweet pepper. I really do enjoy it. And I'll probably grow it again, but I just wasn't really impressed with it this time around. But they get some nice purple and kind of a lime yellow colored pods that eventually ripen to red. And you can eat them at any stage. You can eat them while they're this color or once they turn red, but my preference is to wait until they turn red. And then the last pepper in the greenhouse is this humongous peri peri pepper. So this is a African Thai pepper. They also have these in, I believe, I believe a frutescence and an annuum variety, but this one here is the Bacatum. And it is just, it's probably at least four feet tall, actually probably closer to four and a, four and a half feet tall. And it's just loaded with pods. They start out really a light colored yellow and then they turn orange and eventually kind of a lightish colored red, but it's just super, super productive. It does seem to take a little while for the peppers to ripen, but they're, it is just loaded, loaded with pods. So I'm definitely going to be making a hot sauce out of these. Um, I should go in here and start harvesting. I haven't really done a big harvest on any of the peppers yet this year. So I wanted to do this video and then start picking a bunch of peppers and start working on some hot sauces. So I actually have a lot of ferment still going from peppers that I grew last season sitting on the counter that are just waiting to be blended and bottled up. But I really need to get started on this season's peppers before it starts getting too cold. We've been getting a fair amount of rain lately and it's supposed to start up again here pretty soon. So let's see if I could get this done before it starts raining again. So we have our Numex lemon spice here. This is a yellow jalapeno variety and it's supposed to be hotter than your normal jalapeno. They take forever to ripen, but we've got several here that just recently ripened up. We've had some various sizes of these two. This one's a little bit smaller but most of them are pretty good size. Um, not super prolific. I have picked a few wild green and a couple yellow. They do have pretty good flavor and are pretty spicy. And here we have our sangria pepper. And this is a Mexican variety, kind of like an Anaheim. And it gets some pretty good sized pods here. A lot of them are just starting to ripen to a red here. I haven't really, I don't think I've picked any of these yet, but we've got some that are just about ready. They did take a little bit longer to ripen as well, but it's pretty productive. Now this one I was really looking forward to trying. This is a paprika variety called Tap de Corti, and the pods grow pointy end up, which is a little bit different. There's a few varieties of peppers that grow that way, but not too many, and not usually any that are this large. Usually it's more smaller peppers that tend to grow in that orientation. So I haven't picked any of these yet, but I'm hoping to pick some soon and make some smoked paprika powder out of them. Now the middle row of peppers are my holy trinity, which is three Mexican varieties. The first one here is the poblano, and this is a chocolate poblano. And I've only picked two of these so far that have turned chocolate. Um, I'm growing this one for the Chili Chump Pepper Contest. So I'm not sure what the prize is, but the person that grows the largest or heaviest pod wins. So I'm waiting for these to start changing color and then I'm gonna get those weighed and entered into the contest. So this one here is the Guajillo and I grew this one from seeds I saved from dried peppers that I bought at a local Mexican store and they are uh, it's, it's fairly productive not super productive and they do take a long time to ripen as well this one is the furthest along and I don't think I've harvested any of those yet next in the holy trinity we have the holy moly pepper and this one is a pasilla type pepper and we have quite a few peppers on this one this one is pretty this is probably the more productive of the three Holy Trinity peppers and we've got quite a few 
we got this volunteer tomato here. Um, but we've got one that looks like it's pretty much ripe. I think that's the, there might be two in there actually that are ripe. I haven't harvested any of these either, but I will be harvesting soon. We've actually, oh, maybe there's about four ripe ones in there. Make that five. And then on the last row of peppers in this bed, we have the three bacatums that I'm growing this year. Let's start over here. This is the Ahi Lolo. And this one came from Sunrise Pepper Labs. And it is very productive like most bacatums are. And I'm definitely going to be making a hot sauce out of those. And I have not really harvested any of those, but there's a lot of them in there. I'm waiting till I get more ripe ones so I could have enough for a hot sauce. So I'm leaving them on there as long as possible. They seem to hold up pretty well after they ripen so they don't get real soft. I do see one in here that did get a little soft. So that one probably ripened a while ago. So we'll just go ahead and pick that one. Um, but the rest of them look pretty good. And then this one here is the Sugar Rush Striped. And I was a little scared that this wasn't going to get stripes. But we do have quite a few pods with stripes in here. Um, but we do have one. I think this is the only one that is just turning red. So no stripes on that one. But all the rest so far are getting stripes. So this one is probably the biggest one. Has a nice big stripe down the middle. Um, but this is a really one of my favorite peppers to grow. We've got some fun shapes and various striping on those. And then this last one is a cross of the Sugar Rush Stripe and Susan Garza's Ahi Tangerine. And this was an accidental cross that happened in my greenhouse, uh, I think two years ago. This is the F2 generation of that. And we've got some really nice striping. I have not harvested these yet. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how these taste. So all of the bacatums I always grow in these wire tomato cages because they tend to get much larger than other um, pepper varieties. So if you ever grow a bacatum, a capsicum bacatum, make sure you get a cage around it because they are normally very tall and productive plants. Now this is our only container grown pepper other than our pepper in a cans, which I'll just show you in a minute. Um, but this is the ahi lemon drop crossed with the Korean gochu that I created myself. I think it's been two or three years ago now. I think this is the F3 generation, but we have lots and lots of, of pods on here. And I haven't really done a big harvest on this guy either. So I really need to get that done and start working on a, a yellow colored hot sauce. So I'll probably mix this with some of my other yellow and maybe orange peppers that I have growing in the garden this year. All right, let's take a look at the peppers in a can. So I think my favorite this year is this yellow Zamora. So I've got this one in the rosemary plum locust cider can. And it starts out with some dark purple pods and then eventually they ripen to yellow and some of them keep a little bit of that purpling on there, but they're mostly yellow and the foliage is pretty dark colored, but it's a really pretty pepper. I think it looked perfect for the can. So this is probably the one I'm gonna enter for the contest this year, which ends, I believe the end of this month. So I need to get some pictures taken of that so I could enter that in the contest. And then next up we have our chocolate Linzo. So this is the same chocolate Linzo that we have growing in the greenhouse. And you can see the pods here are actually a little bit redder. So these matured much earlier than the ones in the greenhouse. So they've been sitting out here in the sun. So they seem to be going a little bit more of a kind of a really dark colored red rather than chocolate. And that's just because they're just super mature. So I'll be saving some seeds from this definitely. And this one is in the, the Bad Granny cider can and it did pretty well. And the last pepper in a can we have is called Calico, and it gets these pretty dark red small peppers, but the leaves are really what makes this variety stand out. They're really pretty variegated white and green. 
the actually it's getting some more flowers there uh, but the pods themselves start out purple so we've got let's see there's one right there so it starts out purple and eventually turns this red and these have been ripe for a little while so they are starting to get a little wrinkly so these will be perfect for saving seeds from but this one is in the watts brewing company waggle dance can and really a really pretty pepper i'll probably grow it again maybe um, in the garden all right that is all the peppers that we have going on this september i may have time for one more update in october we'll have to wait and see how the temperature holds out uh, but that is the pepper grow for the season thanks for watching and we'll talk to you again soon if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe you can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.